Thank you for joining today's session, which is entitled Transform SAP Email Communication with Flow Email Builder. We're going to get started now, so I'd like to hand over to today's speaker, Chris Scott. Thank you, Kate. Uh, so, my name is Chris Scott, and I am the founder of Arch. For those of you who don't know us, Arch is a software company that specializes in SAP usability and process automation. I am joined today by Kate Tereshenko, one of our consultants, and by Henry Blythe, the Arch CEO. For those of you we met at Sapphire Now, it's the same team. I'm expecting this session to last less than an hour, including plenty of time for questions and answers. Now your microphones are all, are all muted, so if you have any questions, please use the Q&A area at the bottom of the screen. We will pick up all the questions at the end of the presentation. At Arch, we complement the SAP standard solutions with products that enable our customers to deliver a better user experience together with process automation so that they can draw benefit from cost savings and more easily deploy UX improvements. We're in the business of process improvement and user experience, which we believe are inextricably linked. You can't have a great process and a lousy UX, and you can't have a great UX with a lousy business process. So we focus on the end-to-end -end process and every user interaction, be that as a data provider or consumer. I'm going to start by setting some objectives for today. So my aim is to show you how to, firstly, build powerful SAP emails with ease. Secondly, ditch cumbersome PDF attachments and put the content inside the email body instead. Third, transform SAP communication inside and outside the organization. And fourthly, empower business users to take ownership of SAP communication for the very first time. So today I'm going to talk about the place business email has in our processes. I look at the business drivers to consider the importance of email and then I'll briefly consider the communication that SAP generates and describe where I think it falls short. Then I'll introduce our solution flow and show you some real use cases of how we can dramatically improve on the standard offering. When I was planning this session I thought I'd try to make it as exciting as possible. So today I'm going to attempt four live demos during the course of the next 40 minutes or so. So stay tuned as anything could happen. And towards the end, I have an announcement to make, so please stay tuned for that. So let's start by trying to describe the place that business email has in our organizations to start building a picture of the business drivers. If we consider the business communities you correspond with, it can include employees, shareholders, pension holders, citizens, suppliers, partners, contractors, and of course, customers. We engage with these communities in a number of ways. For example, through the internet, there's a huge amount of self-service where our communities consume the information we publish or make available. Now, if we consider the scenarios where we want to push information directly to these communities, then we're talking about correspondence rather than information consumption or two-way communication. And it's those business processes that involve automated correspondence that I want to focus on. When we think about how we correspond with these many communities, we find that for most scenarios, email is the only communication medium. That sounds astonishing, but it's really important for most scenarios, email is the only communication medium. Most of your information recipients are not receiving app notifications or SMS messages or telephone calls, but they do receive emails. So automated SAP emails comprise a significant amount of business communication, and each email helps shape user and customer experience, either for good or for bad. Every automated email your system sends, be it inside the organization or to an external recipient, forms a really important experiential function. And it's particularly important when your emails are the main way you correspond with that recipient. So clearly, email design should be an essential part of every organization's communication strategy. Thinking it's just an email 
isn't good enough anymore. So we all know about the rise of spam, um, but in fact the use of legitimate business email continues to rise. For many business processes, email has now replaced fax and print almost entirely. The number of email users is in fact rising every year. We may not use email so much socially now, but it remains the number one de facto means of business communication. For many business processes, the email has now become the document of record rather than an attached PDF. For example, if I order something from Amazon, I expect all the communication at every part of the process, including the invoice, to be within the body of the emails, not in some separate large attached file. But given the enormous number of emails we all receive, it is increasingly important to maximise the impact of those emails that we send so that they stand out from everything else. Different email content has different relevance to different recipients. So in order to stand out, emails should be tailored for each recipient. And of course, emails should be personalized too. I should receive an email that begins, Dear Chris, and I should receive it in my own language. But tailored content can take into consideration my history, my preferences, my geography, my account type, or include dynamic content generated just for me from an AI algorithm. And now you've really got my attention. That means I don't want to use the same boilerplate for everyone, but to dynamically include or exclude information pertinent to each particular recipient. So add all this together and it makes a compelling story. It's entirely about user and customer experience and getting this right is really important. Your emails are your customer service. The care you take in uh, delivering compelling emails indicates the level of care and, and respect really that you have for the email recipients. Now, so far, I've purposely not shown any email images, uh, but instead I've shown images of people because people are at the heart of this conversation, not technology. So every automated business email you send tells a story about you and you get to choose what story you want to tell. So with that in mind, let's talk about the emails we get from SAP. And the first thing to point out is that there are hundreds of them. Most organizations have all kinds of process automation that trigger notifications, either prompts to get work done, like approve a purchase order or vacation request, or messages to say that something has been done, like your expenses have been paid or your capital expenditure request has been approved. So all these process workflows trigger hundreds and hundreds of these messages inside the organization or outside to keep the wheels turning. And these processes cut right across the organization. They might be HR processes or master data management, purchasing, sales, finance. They might be standard SAP processes or entirely custom processes. But that's not all. Every time we send a quotation or sales order confirmation, uh, invoice, um, an account statement, a dunning letter, a payslip, a purchase order, a payment advice, every time we engage with the outside world to send uh, an output or correspondence, then we're using email. In addition, you might even be running background jobs to create reports to send to recipients within the organization. Uh, you might trigger administer alert emails when things go wrong. So we've got customers who have identified over 200 different emails that the SAP system sends, and we don't think they're unusual. So the second important thing to note, after you recognize the huge number of SAP emails, is that they're all pretty much horrible. Now, of course, I should explain what I mean by horrible. They are of their time. They are functional. So here's an example of a workflow notification. And it's actually an HTML email. It, it needs to be in order to get those links to work. And the body of the email includes some data from the workflow too, so that's pretty useful. But clearly, it is really plain, and it isn't engaging in any way. 
Now, given the right HTML skills, an SAP developer can add some styling and change the content of this email, perhaps add a logo and change the font. But that's a technical job and not something that you'd want to revisit very often. If we look at an output example, then the email in general is plain text with a PDF attachment. All the document data sits inside the attachment. And in reality, all the development focus has been in making that PDF look good and adhere to corporate standards. The focus has not been on the email content. So there are these two scenarios in SAP, HTML content that is difficult to develop or plain content with a separate attachment. And this is what we call the SAP email problem. Emails are plain. To make them beautiful, we need HTML content, but HTML content is hard to develop inside SAP. So the choice for the standard toolset is either ugly or expensive. So this means that in general, SAP emails end up being pretty plain and don't include much data. And while many areas of SAP have advanced dramatically, email hasn't. It's really been left out and hasn't changed for pretty much 20 years. And that's really extraordinary. It's incredibly difficult to add dynamic or tailored content. You can't add document data inside the email body because it doesn't handle tables and repeated content. The focus is entirely on the attachment as the document of record instead of the email itself. Email documents in SAP just disappear out of SAP Connect. There is no history, no archiving, no concept of recipient lists. It's a basis tool, not a business one. So frankly, I think it's really no longer fit for purpose. There's absolutely a burning need for something better, much better. So this brings me to Flow. The Flow is a solution for creating and managing powerful, compelling and beautiful emails inside SAP. So with Flow, you can design new emails for any SAP process. It enables your business users to create and change email content really easily without involving IT. It also enables dynamic content to be included, which is tailored for each recipient. It allows emails to be saved as separate documents within the SAP system and provides a history so you can see what was sent to whom. And this means that emails can be changed easily and regularly. It means that you can ditch PDF attachments where you don't want them. In short, Flow solves the SAP email problem and delivers against those business drivers that we started off with. So technically speaking, Flow is an ABAP add-on that it installs on top of your SAP solution. And that might be ERP, ECC, S for HANA or uh, HANA Enterprise Cloud. It could sit on Solution Manager if you like. It just needs an ABAP stack. You can then set up and use Flow through normal SAP menus and the IMG. A Flow provides a module for email management. This includes uh, defining email types, storing the content blocks, managing all the business logic for data determination, uh, attachments, images, recipients, all the components we need to build an email. And it also includes the capability to store re recipient lists for the purpose of mass communication. At runtime, Flow is an email generator. This can be entirely data driven so that we can uh, dynamically select and manipulate the email template based on data from inside SAP. We can support very simple emails or really complex ones where, for example, content is dynamically tailored or we have multiple levels of nested content. And of course, we can include images and attachments and, and of course, there's a, a log so we can see exactly what was sent. Flow provides powerful integration um, with, uh, excuse me, Flow includes powerful integration with the SAP data. Actually, because we deliver it as an API, you can trigger it from non-SAP systems too passing in whatever data you like. It's also uh, integrated to SAP authorization, so you can control who can do what. And all the outbound messages flow out of the normal SAP Connect interface. Flow Email Builder is a business user tool for creating and changing SAP emails. 
the Flow backend product has been around for a couple of years, and I've been banging on about it for a couple of years. But what's changed this year is that we've launched Flow Email Builder, and it's a game changer. And as I will show you, Email Builder is really easy to use, and it enables business users to take control of SAP output and correspondence for the first time. You can connect the app to your SAP development system or to your SAP production system. That means you get to choose whether you manage email content as configuration data or master data, just like, for example, with uh, standard text. Uh, when you choose to manage content as master data, then changes can be made quickly without involving IT. Okay, so now I'm going to perform the first demo where I'll run through some of the features of uh, Flow Email Builder. Okay, so this is uh, Flow Email Builder. Uh, there are three parts to the app. We can manage uh, emails, email templates, uh, manage a library. This is a library of content blocks uh, and, uh, and a test trigger uh, testing function. I'm going to start off with the library. So here in the library, we can build reusable blocks that can be used in any email type. Uh, I can search for content if I so wish and sort. Um, uh, and so what I'm going to do is, uh, for example, I'll sort for a uh, search for banner and see, uh, see things I've called to be banners. Uh, in this case, I'm going to sort for something with welcome in it. And so here I've got a piece of content. Um, which I can open up in uh, an editor. So uh, having chosen a block, uh, you can see I've got a rich text editor here, just like Microsoft Word. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a link into uh, this button here. So I'm just going to highlight it, add a link. And then save. Uh, so for each of these these content blocks, so obviously I can, I can manage the content, uh, I can manage properties, the things like background colors and padding and borders. Uh, I can uh, give it a description, uh, control whether it's a repeatable uh, block or not, and also see where this uh, block is used in different uh, email types. So at the moment, this block is just used in a, a single email type. Um, you can see that I can drag and drop this uh, the, the, this control here to see either more of the, the content uh, as a preview or more of the uh, the editor. I could also use this uh, to translate uh, uh, this to a different language or to uh, copy. For, so I, it's a, a quick way of creating new content by copying uh, existing content. So I've saved that. I can go back to uh, go back now to I manage emails. So here I see uh, uh, all the email types that are configured in the system, or at least all the ones that I'm allowed to uh, to edit. Uh, and again, I can search and sort for particular types if I uh, wish. I'm going to start off uh, with a uh, an empty one uh, this, uh, for this demo. So when I'm creating a new uh, some new content for an email type, I'm asked. What is the, the language, first of all, that I'm creating in, and also a boiler template. Effectively, how wide is it? Um, and we use different widths in order to control how uh, that it's, it's going to look good on a smaller device. So there are some cases where I might want a full screen. In this case, I'm just having a, a plain so 600 pixel uh, email. So now I get into the main editor where I can I can build um, emails. One of the quickest way is to just drag in content from the uh, library. So here I can scroll down and uh, I'll choose a heading block. Um, maybe I'll add that uh, content that I just uh, changed, and then uh, add in a a banner.
Okay, so these I'm, I'm reusing blocks here from the library that were previously um, that created for me. Um, I might want to take something out of the library. Um, there's a couple of ways of doing that, but if I want to make a, a change to this block here without changing the uh, the block in the library, I'll just to take this out of the library, and then I can edit it here through the email type. So perhaps I want to make uh, something bold. And you can see that we've got some field names in here, some variables uh, that will be substituted um, at runtime. Uh, and but apart from that, this is a, a really very straightforward tool for a business user to use. At the top here, I've got some settings uh, where I can control the subject and the, the sender email address, uh, choose whether to save the email body uh, in the database when it's sent each time, uh, and uh, if there are attachments to this email, whether to save those. Um, with this option, I can translate to a, a different language. Of course, I, I need to know the, the new language. It's not automatic. It, it copies everything, and then I change the text uh, myself. Uh, and then I've got some preview and, uh, and save options up there as well. Um, so I'll go ahead and save this, uh, this one. Um, just show a, uh, another example of uh, an email with a, a bit more data inside it. Um, sales order notification. That, uh, again, we'll, we'll come back to this later. And so uh, when we have more SAP uh, data inside the body of the email, we see more of these variables uh, inside there. In a, uh, uh, so either using the variables from the document output or from the workflow container or variables you've made up yourself uh, and, uh, and then the technical guys fill them. Okay, in this example, you can see that an item section. So we've got a, a block here that repeats. And indeed, there's a repeating section within a repeating section uh, for, for that example. Okay, and so now the third uh, section, that area of email builder is this uh, test trigger, the tool for previewing and uh, testing uh, email types. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll test that one I've just created now. Um, I, can, uh, I can just choose the email type and do a quick preview in this tool. So I can see that's, the, uh, uh, that's what the email is going to look like. Um, I've got those couple of variables in there. So for the purpose of the test, I can, I can just fill them uh, with, some, uh, with some dummy data here. F name, Chris, customer number, five, and just refresh the preview. And we'll see the, uh, the variables now have been uh, substituted correctly. And uh, if I want to uh, test that, I can send it to my own email address there to check out what it looks like on uh, uh, older email clients like Outlook and indeed smaller email clients like the, uh, the iPhone. And there really is no other uh, better way than actually sending a real life email to, uh, to check that it, uh, it worked. So let's go and see that uh, hopefully arrive. And so here I'm looking at in Outlook and you can see that that email that uh, I very quickly built there uh, using these library blocks has, uh, has arrived and uh, and looks as I, what I'd expect to see in, uh, in Outlook. So uh, let's look at a, a couple more examples of what we can do with Flow, uh, and then I'll run through some runtime demonstrations. Um, the first uh, major use case is process notifications. Um, so these can be triggered in various different ways, notably from uh, SAP workflow. Um, so instead of sending plain workflow notifications with no data, uh, or limited data, you can create impressive notifications with all the information 
uh, the work from the workflow container inside the email. Flow gives us a new approach for SAP document output. So with Flow, we can replace the plain email and the PDF attachment with a new graphical email. So Flow supports dynamic content. So logos can change or information can be included or excluded based on SAP business logic. So you can replace SAP scripts, smart forms and Adobe forms with email templates. And I know I'm repeating myself here, but this is incredibly important. I think it's worth highlighting some of the differences between using the email body for document output instead of using a PDF attachment. So firstly, the email size is smaller, a lot smaller. That means there are benefits down the whole chain inside your SAP system, uh, your email server, the recipient email server and the recipient's email client. Um, one large customer reckoned they could make a business case for flow based on the database savings alone. And secondly, of course, it's faster, faster to send, faster to receive, faster to open. Uh, the performance uh, gains inside the SAP every time you're running some document output. So we're improving the experience of dealing uh, with, uh, with us in multiple ways. And so that should be a key part of your digital transformation strategy. We can also send mass correspondence to different business communities like partners, contractors or customers. And the emails you send can be tailored to each recipient based on data inside SAP. And that's important. There are, there are many mail merge and email marketing products available that send email uh, templates to a list of recipients. Some variable substitution, so products like MailChimp, which is fantastic for marketing. The difference with Flow is that the list of recipients is more than just a list. It's a list of customers or suppliers or employees, and we know stuff about them. That means we can tailor the email by, for example, customer group or geography or preferences. A single email template can trigger unique emails for each recipient. And finally, an additional capability of Flow is the generation of formatted reports that can be consumed using Excel and indeed uh, lots of other apps. Because we are generating HTML uh, with Flow and it's, that's universally understood, uh, we can use Flow to generate downloadable reports that can be consumed using many different applications and devices. And it's really great to be able to download information from SAP into, say, Excel or Word without then having to spend a long time reformatting the raw data. And there's a blog on the Flow website that shows all the steps on how to do this with sample code. And it's perhaps something I'll return to in a future webinar uh, if there's interest. So now I'm going to demonstrate three of these use cases. Um, first of all, we'll, we'll start off with a sales order output and then we'll do an SAP workflow notification uh, and then finish off with a simple newsletter. Uh, and in future webinars, I'm planning to walk through how to build these examples uh, step by step. So we'll start off in the, the SAP um, uh, SAP GUI and we'll uh, create ourselves a sales order. So I'm going to, it's going to be a, a normal sales order. I'm going to create with reference to another one for speed. And copy that information across. And so we've got a, a sales order here with a couple of uh, items uh, on it. Um, we've got a quantity of uh, 20 and 10. I think some schedule lines have been created for the top uh, or line there, a uh, total value of uh, just over $41,000. I'll add a purchase order number. Um, and I'll just hit save. Okay, so the sales order has been, uh, been saved now. Um, and that will trigger an email uh, immediately. 
So just wait for that to arrive, and indeed here it is. And so now we see that uh, I've got a slightly wider, uh, this is an 800 pixel uh, email has arrived. Um, you can see I've got repeating content and indeed nested repeating content. I've got a mixture of images in there as well as, uh, as, well as data. Um, and everything I might expect to see in a, a PDF attachment is now in the body of the email to the extent where that I don't need any PDF attachments. So this is this replaces my SAP script or my uh, my Adobe forms. That's all I need in my uh, my sales order output. Okay. So now we'll uh, look at the second example, uh, an SAP workflow uh, notification. Uh, I'm going to use the standard workflow test tool to uh, to trigger a new workflow. And uh, this is, in fact, this is a, a workflow that's uh, delivered with uh, the SAP IDES system. So I'm just picking up something that's a, a pre-delivered workflow. So here I'm going to fill in some uh, some data fields. Um, this is a, a leave request, but it really doesn't matter what it is. It's uh, it's just a uh, just to trigger some information to to get some data in a, a workflow container to trigger a, a notification. Um, so I'm, I'm going to trigger this workflow with this data inside. I'll just save that. So uh, the workflow has now has now begun. I need to uh, to execute that next to you know to push the notification out. So this might be uh, done by background job typically. Oops. Uh, And that's telling me now that uh, a new one new message has been sent. Uh, and so again, I look in my email, and here it is, just arriving. And so now that workflow has uh, has given me information and including data from inside that uh, that workflow container in the the body of the email, and hopefully enough for me to be able to uh, to make an easy decision, so I can process the item back in either Fiori inbox or universal work list or wherever I'm doing my work um, in order to uh, keep that process moving. Okay. So the uh, final uh, example now uh, is um, a mass correspondence. Uh, so this is where we're going to send uh, the same email, albeit that we can tailor it to multiple uh, recipients. Uh, so I'm, again, I'm going to trigger that from the uh, SAP uh, uh, SAP GUI. In fact, I'll open up the flow um, menu, and here you can see that we can maintain recipient lists. So I built one already for this purpose, uh, recipient list called uh, Web One. If I look inside that list. I just got a couple. I've got Henry and me inside there. Um, uh, in this, we see that we've got some index fields, and this is where I could put a link to uh, a customer number, a supplier number, or an employee, or an SAP user master record, in order to go and uh, search uh, for more information, in order to include that in the uh, in the email, or to uh, to, to use that to uh, to tailor and personalise the the email. Um, for each recipient. So just got a couple of people in the list. So now I'm going to use the uh, function to trigger a, a mass correspondence email. I'll choose a, a simple newsletter and choose my recipient list and send immediately. And that's all I need to do. And it's telling me that two emails have been uh, have been sent. And so again, I can go up to my uh, Microsoft Outlook. Here it is arriving. And so, uh, so I've got uh, so it knows who I am, uh, for example. And there's a whole bunch of, of content. And it kind of doesn't matter what that content is, other than it's for me. 
uh, and so uh, and as indeed it is just a mixture of uh, uh, of images and uh, texts and, and links. So finish off with a few more slides. So I've decided uh, today not to talk in depth about the technology, but to keep everything at a pretty high level. Uh, but if you've got technical questions that I don't cover today, feel free to reach out to me uh, or indeed use the Q&A uh, pod and I'll make sure that you get a full answer, um, if not today, then in a follow-up email. Uh, and I'll also copy in everybody else who has registered. Um, I just want to briefly cover the where the components of Flow sit in order for you to understand what you need at a, a very basic level. So there are two components of Flow that we've seen there, the Flow backend and then the Flow email builder. The, the Flow backend in, installs on any ABAP stack uh, as I explained before. So you, you do need an SAP system on premise or private cloud, but any NetWeaver system will do uh, or indeed s for hana the Flow Email Builder is a SAP UI 5 app, so if you're running the Fiori Launchpad or other Fiori apps, then you already have everything you need. Uh, the app can be deployed on-premise or to the cloud, again, just like any other Fiori app. If you use it in the cloud, you'll need the SAP Cloud Connector, uh, and in any case, you now have SAP Gateway to communicate between the, uh, the, the front end and the back end. So those are the basic components. At runtime, that is to say at the time of email generation, uh, then we're not using the email builder app uh, other than for the, the test scenario. Uh, Flow is delivered as, a, as an API, uh, and what I mean by that is a, a function module. You can trigger it from anywhere you like. If we consider our use cases, the API is triggered either from a, an SAP workflow step or a print program or from the mass correspondence mass correspondence tool that is included as part of Flow. And in all cases, the, uh, the API constructs the email and passes it to the SAP Business Communication Service, uh, which in turn routes it to the outbound SMTP server. So Flow sits right inside the SAP system and the actual message is sent out in the normal way. The use of Flow is growing really quickly. Uh, we have customers in the UK, United States, Germany, Netherlands and Finland and indeed at sea. Um, we have customers in public sector, infrastructure services, pharmaceuticals, leisure, um, transportation, oil and gas and consulting. Um, one large customer uses Flow for dunning and sends out millions of emails per year. And one of our smaller customers has already got more than 150 different types of email. Um, we tried to make the pricing as simple as possible, so it's completely transparent and all on the website and easily affordable for any SAP customer. So let me try and pull everything together in a, uh, into a simple summary. Um, so let's start by re returning to those key business drivers and see how Flow addresses the requirements. So firstly, emails define your customer experience. So with Flow Email Builder, you can now build powerful emails uh, inside SAP quickly and easily. This enables you to transform the SAP communication both inside and outside the organization and deliver uh, a better experience to your users, uh, your customers and other communities, uh, an experience that they, they need and, and perhaps deserve. Secondly, email has replaced PDF as a document of record. And of course, I know there are exceptions, but for the most part, Flow provides a completely new approach for SAP output. We shift the focus from a printed form or attached PDF to the email itself and we save that inside the SAP system with a unique document number that enables us to ditch the PDF attachments, which are large, cumbersome, difficult to maintain, and can even get stuck in firewalls. And thirdly, emails should be tailored, not just personalized. 
So with flow, we can add business logic to dynamically include or exclude or dynamically change email content at runtime based on a particular scenario. Email content templates are, can be constantly changing with marketing banners, or sales promotions or website links being updated really quite regularly. And for the first time, business users can take ownership of the SAP correspondence and make those changes themselves and quickly and without involving IT. So I hope you found today's session informative and interesting. And of course, I hope you're interested in flow and possible next steps. Uh, there are se several options. So firstly, we'd love you to try flow for yourself. And I'm delighted to be able to make an announcement today that uh, we've got a system that you can access via the web, play with flow email builder and create your own email types. There's nothing to install. We'll just provide you with a user and login details and where you go. And in fact, that's the system I've been using today to, uh, for these demonstrations. Now, we only have one system, so access is limited. Um, but there's a new form on the Flow website today through which you can request access. Another option is to install the software on your own SAP system. Um, we're offering a 60-day free trial. So we're happy for you to use the product however you want, even in your production system. Um, and again, there's a request form on the website. Just fill that in and we'll send you the software links, uh, installation guide, everything you need to, to get going and to prove your own use cases uh, yourselves. We just want people to try it. And we're planning a follow-up session next month, um, a second webinar in which I'll do a deep dive into SAP document output with Flow. And so everybody who has uh, registered for this uh, webinar, I'll just send out the meeting requests uh, to uh, the invitation, so there's no need to re-register. Um, and of course, finally, there, there are, is lots of information available at the Flow website, um, which is flow.com. So if anyone has any questions at all, uh, please use the Q&A pod at the bottom of the screen. Uh, as I said before, what uh, we don't manage to answer now, um, we will respond to fully by email and, uh, and copy everybody in. So, uh, so I'm going to hand back to Kate now to, uh, to review any questions. Thank you, Chris. We do have a couple of questions, um, and I'm just going to read them out. So there is one from Mira, and she's asking um, that for the images in the email, um, will they be visible to the recipient irrespective of their Outlook settings? Um, so that's a, a great question. Uh, there are two ways we can manage attachments. Uh, one is the way uh, I showed you there, the, the kind of easy way, which is effectively you're pointing at a, a link. So the, the uh, uh, sorry, 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 it was the images or attachments? Yes, it was images. Images, yes. sorry. Images. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I just said the wrong word. Two ways we can manage images. Um, so one is a link to the image. So the image is, is saved uh, on a, uh, typically on a web server somewhere. And so you effectively you're pointing at the image. And so the default view for some versions of Microsoft Outlook will be to ask the uh, recipient to, um, uh, to if they want to see the images or not, uh, as it's kind of a, a safety thing. It's not there for all versions of Outlook, just uh, just some. And um, uh, if it's uh, within your own company, or, or indeed, you know, if it's somebody you trust, you can. Uh, you can click on the uh, the image and say always trust this uh, this provider, and uh, and then those images will uh, always show. The same images would always show if you're looking at a you know, looking at them on a, a mobile phone or any web based um, uh, browser email client. Um, the other way to manage images is uh, embedded images, 
uh, and we support embedded images through a, a flow user exit. Uh, and if we use embedded images, then they always show first time in, uh, in Outlook uh, because effectively you're sending the image each time. So the email size gets bigger um, and uh, the, the image flows along with it. So, uh, and we used to kind of think that that was a good option if people were looking at their, uh, their emails, but um, weren't connected at the uh, at the time, but these days everyone is always connected all the time, and so there's fewer and fewer occasions that we'd want to uh, use the embedded image option. But it does solve that Outlook little um, uh, problem. It actually adds some other problems, so it's not a uh, it's not a, a, a terrific answer because sometimes you get the effectively the uh, the, the the same response that you want to show these images in other uh, email clients. So um, uh, uh, using those, uh, those image links, the easy way tends to be the way that everybody does it. Um, but, and so that's why when you're using Outlook and you get emails from people, you often see an outline of the image rather than the image itself the first time, and then you can choose to show them or not. So I think that's nothing to do with, uh, with our product. I think that's just a function of you know, how emails and images and Outlook works. Thank you. Um, then there are also a couple questions from Joyce. I'll just read the first one. Um, is it still possible to add attachments if desired? It certainly is. Yes. Um, and so, um, uh, so, so yes. Yeah, so, for example, it might be for uh, you an invoice output. You still want a PDF uh, attachment, uh, but you'd like a nicer uh, email to carry that attachment. And so, so having a mixture of both is, uh, is is possible. It means that you have to still manage your your, your Adobe form or your SAP script or, or whatever it is for the um, the PDF uh, as well as the uh, as the email content. The other question is: Is there any cloud requirement? Concerned for those companies who have strict security that avoids cloud. So no, there's no requirement to use the cloud at all because we're we're providing the uh, the, the finished app uh, so that it can be deployed entirely on premise. So there's there's no need there's no no requirement to use the cloud. Thank you. Um, there is another question as well. Uh, from Suresh, and he is asking whether the install requires back end and front end as well. So uh, yes, basically it's a there, there are two components. So one is the the back end component. So that is the ABAP uh, add on. So you, uh, so you use you know, standard SAP tools to install that um, that that ABAP add on. Uh, the um, the uh, if you're deploying the app um, on a separate front-end server, then uh, you do that in basically in exactly the same way that you do with standard Fiori apps. Uh, there's no no difference. So uh, so you can uh, deploy that to a separate uh, front-end server if you so wish, or it could be sat on the same app, app uh, stack as the uh, as the back-end. So uh, so we we support both models. Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, there's just another question from Sarah. She's asking how much of the build can business users do? Okay, yeah, so um, of course there's a, there's a, when I'm creating a new email type, there's always going to be some IT involvement. And so, um, so those, we need to feed in data into those variables. Um, so and even if it's a something like a, an order output uh, in that example I showed, I wasn't showing uh, USD for the currency. I had a dollar sign. So that's where the uh, the developer would come in. They would effectively make the dates human readable or make the currency symbols uh, human readable. Um, but uh, uh, changing the content of the email, changing the texts, uh, rearranging things, adding styling, borders, images, all that, the actual email design itself, can be owned by the business user. Uh, so once you're making changes to an existing uh, email type, 
uh, nine times out of ten, the business users should be able to do everything themselves. It's only if there's some data change uh, that uh, you would need to involve uh, IT. Suresh has a follow-up question. Um, what are the typical deployment timelines? Well, um, it's, uh, I mean, it can be done in a day. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's very, very straightforward uh, installation process. Uh, you know, a, uh, a, few, a small number of steps uh, in the installation guide. Uh, and so, so uh, within a day, as long as you have all, all the right authorizations, uh, you should be able to see uh, emails coming out the other end. Um, and so, uh, so again, you, you will need uh, a bit of simple ABAP. Uh, if you don't have that, then then with the, you know the plenty of partners, uh, we can help people as well. Uh, for our part, where you know this, we think that uh, that customers and partners should be able to pick this up and do you know 99% of it themselves, and uh, and we're just here to help uh, uh, whenever called upon. So uh, so we're not expecting a big you know, consulting project to come and. Uh, that come and install this uh, for customers. Uh, it's a, it's a lightweight thing that people can uh, should be able to pick up and run with themselves really quickly. Um, your answer flows well with um, Joyce's question as well. She's asking uh, what development skills are needed for the email type development, and uh, whether it's ABAP only or other skills as well. So it's ABAP only. There's there's one piece. So if I was to go, let's. Uh, Go back to email builder um, here, uh, and I'll just pick up any uh, old uh, email. Say, uh, say that newsletter. Um, so when I'm do, when, when I'm building this uh, uh, this, mostly I can just use this uh, this editor, and then I can add some some properties, some uh, some some padding around the side. But there are occasions where it gets a little bit more complicated, and I, will, I put tables inside here. So if I look at that uh, sales order notification and go to uh, and look at this table, I've kind of got two sets of padding going on. So I've got the, the padding around the outside of the table, which is 20 pixels, and then inside the table I have padding as well. And so for that, I go in my cell properties. I'm adding some CSS of eight pixels, so that to, to add to, to make things look really really beautiful, a little bit of basic styling. And a lot of this, this these widths and heights are automatically put in here for me. So so again, as I make changes, this is changing for me. But occasionally, I might come in here and add a little bit of styling, um, and ultimately. If uh, if what I if this editor wasn't able to achieve precisely what I wanted to achieve, I can always toggle and uh, and actually change the HTML itself that it's um, that it's generated. And so, for particularly complex requirements, you might end up thinking, uh, I'll 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 tweak this uh, this HTML rather than rely 100% on the uh, on the editor. Um, but uh, but you know we're, we're really we're talking about exceptional things. Uh, everything else is uh, is simple uh, ABAP user exits, or indeed it might be that I've written a uh, a custom program uh, to select some data, and then I want to uh, call flow. So basically, call the flow function module to push this data at it in order to uh, to, to trigger the API. Um, so again. Pretty simple uh, ABAP uh, required to uh, to actually make the output uh, fire. Thank you. Um, we just have another question from Peter, and he's asking whether you could have one shared installation of Flow um, Central Management when running S4 and ECC 6.0. Yeah. Um, um, yes, you could. Uh, it makes basically. It, um, in fact, one of those examples I, I showed you, that sales order example, was uh, uh, I was triggering. Um, I, I was actually triggering flow in a separate box. So uh, I just tweaked the print program to call flow by uh, uh, you know by RFC. So uh, so that's absolutely no problem at all. Um, 
So uh, if you've got if you've got a mix of systems, uh, it's charged by the basically on the number of productive instances that it is installed on. So uh, so there's no problem at all. Uh, obviously, if everything's in the same system, it makes that decoding slightly easier. Um, but um, and things like um, things like the standard print programs we provide, the standard workflow uh, functions we provide will just work. If your flow system is in a separate box, you're going to have to uh, copy, clone, and, uh, and move those uh, uh, those programs, put them in the other box in order to call flow uh, remotely. So, um, but it's perfectly possible. I'm afraid that's all we have time for today, uh, but we will get back to everyone with a full response to any unanswered questions. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us, joining us, and we hope you will join us again next time. Goodbye. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.